When you get onto a project, it's kind of a collaborative sort of discussion, especially with designing the looks. Um, that normally, you, you talk about that with your producers and directors, and then I will go off and do lots of research, especially because I tend to do lots of period dramas. So I will always take on the, the period of what I'm, I'm going to take on. Uh, and then I research, and then I mood board quite a lot of my ideas, uh, even before I get any, any cast on board. Um, that's to give just a, a sort of a feel of, of where I'm going to take the hair and makeup. Um, I do both. I do hair and makeup and prosthetics. I, I, I find I could not, I find it hard to just um, design, say, just the makeup or the hair. I like to see the whole picture. And then also it's a collaborative um, with costume as well. It's, 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 you need to sort of work with, with and production design. It's kind of, I, I see them all kind of linking together as well. So it's not, not just about myself. I tend to like working with costume designers as well to kind of get an overall feel of where I'm going and, and that I'm pitching correctly. With the director, he'll, he'll also bring something to the table as well and, and show his, share his ideas. He'll normally do kind of a, a little brief outline of, of characters and certain things. It depends also if, if it's a, a recreation of, of what you're doing or a remake of a, of, a, of a drama that's already been done. That's another thing to take into consideration. Or you're going to try and make it your own and make it different, which is very quite important and actually quite hard to do. Then when the actors come on board, I would show them my mood boards and then I would collaborate with them because obviously an artist will bring something to the table and they, they, they will then will either like your ideas or they bring something to, you know, from that, they will also put their input in. So it does take a little bit of time. Sometimes it will, you know, you'll get it like that. Other times it takes a little bit of work. And then you've got the physicalities of, say you've got an idea for a character and you might think, oh my God, I, want, I see her as a blonde, especially for a lady, and they come and they've got short hair and they've got red hair. Then you, it's a bit more of a process and you're hoping that the timing of everything will slot into place. It's quite, quite a magical process. And, uh, and sometimes it can, would be very smooth and sometimes it can not be so smooth. And you have to consider all these things, you know, what do I do, will I wig this person? Will I go and get their hair colour changed? And it's, it's quite interesting, you know, facial hair with the guys, haircuts, wigs. It, it's, it's, a, it's a process, prosthetics as well. So that, that's kind of how it kind of evolves, really. I started, my background, I started a little bit more in, the, in films and quite prosthetic based. And also I'm a hairdresser from previous by trade. Period was something I kind of ended up kind of um, falling into. And I think a lot of that, I think the big break for me was when I did Hunger, because it was a period drama, although I've lived that period, um, which was the, uh, I think it was the 70s, 80s, 70s. From that piece of work, I think put me on, on kind of on the map of doing that. And then I got more offers in period. It just went from there and I really enjoy it. it it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly different from contemporary, but I think the processes are the same. I wouldn't, I'm not gonna say one is easier than the other. Period is harder because maybe you probably would have more wigs but then that's not necessarily true because even contemporary you might have to wig somebody or recreate a look so I think they both have its its, its different different strengths and different um, dilemmas I think. I think things have changed since I first started out. When I first say started prosthetics it, a lot of it was done with foam latex and now we've gone on to this wonderful silicon uh, process. Silicon is amazing. We've got probondos, uh, which are these wonderful scars uh, that are very quick to do now for wounds. But some of the old fashioned techniques I still love. I love blood. I'm a big fan of blood and gore. Um, I don't know why, but I just, I just love that creation. You can have a lot of fun with it. And I think you've just got to keep trying to improve and there's always room for improvement is kind of my... One thing I do enjoy is I do like working overseas because you get to meet people maybe somewhere like Russia that hasn't got certain resources and come up with some amazing stuff from literally using their imagination. They haven't got the luxury of lots of makeup shops. Everyone has their, 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 their great people, which I've, I've had the pleasure to work with some of them, which is great. Gunpowder was an interesting journey. I have a theory sometimes that crowd is a very different baby to main team. Uh, crowd is a, different, a very different art. Uh, main team is just, it's just a different pace, a different way. And um, for me, it was very hard sometimes to get a, 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 a crowd supervisor on sometimes the smaller projects where they expect main team to do that work. And sometimes it's, you can do, but sometimes you can't do that every day. So it, it physically becomes impossible. And I also believe in very strong planning 
of a lot of the period hairstyles, you have to have work to be able to do your fittings, which I think sometimes, I mean, I, I could not imagine running a crowd room when you've got no stock that's pre-prepared -pre and, um, and without having luxury time to dress them. Uh, because you haven't got the budget to have them pre-dressed, so you have to kind of do it in-house. So how I planned gunpowder was I got a great team of people. I sourced the stock quite cheaply. So obviously, Elizabethan styling is um, very curly, very frizzed, so I, I spent quite a few days sourcing wigs that we could do that. And um, I actually went on Afro because um, we did a lot of Afro wigs in creating the shapes. I had, a, I had a wonderful team of people to come and dress for me. Lovely Rupert Simon, I had Rowena Dean, I had Jackie Sweeney, I had Laura Devarnier, uh, Susan Newbold. We, we, we all sat and we did, they did the dressing, so they brought a lot into the Elizabethan hairstyling for the women. The, the, the people have to see what you're doing. And then I, I shopped for everything, all the accessories, and tried to make it look a bit, you know, make it our own, but also with the period as well, after doing all the research. Pearls, obviously, Elizabethan pearls is very important and jewels so we, we did that ourselves actually. Yeah, I, I, yeah, the story is part of our history. Yeah, it was, it was the writing and, and the story and then knowing that Kit was involved and his background because he was part of uh, the Catesby, he's descendants from the Catesby's. My initial thing was what am I going to do to make him different from the Game of Thrones character of Jon Snow? Um, I did talk to him about that um, but obviously I couldn't do too much uh, with him. But what I did do was I said to him, your, um, your hair on Jon Snow is quite dark. And when I met him, I said, would you mind if I just got your hair slightly lightened a little bit for this? And you can always go back. It wouldn't be detrimental to his, his hair. We just did what we call balayage, just through the top, which just pre-lightens uh, a little bit so that when the light hit his hair, it did have kind of a lovely red tinge to the hair and I tanned him a little bit because Jon Snow is always kept very pale so I thought well I'll just make him as if he was an outside type of chap riding all the time weathered a bit more so that's the approach that it was very small but I felt like I, I made a, a bit of a difference if you've done something don't get too upset if it doesn't 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 work and we have lit, had Lib Tyler uh, on board playing Anne Vaux and again this woman was a, a woman of the Bible she actually did embrace the fact that the style was plain not that elaborate and uh, and she she went for it which I was thought maybe she'd want a bit more twee and I said to her she's a Puritan we want her completely uh, pure so we, we didn't over glamorize her at all so that's also I think a good a good way of doing it but, I mean, I will just want to say one thing. Going back to gunpowder, when you asked me about my team, I actually um, then had to have... Um, it, there was myself and my supervisor, and then I managed to get a crowd supervisor that didn't work all the time. But I actually, the rest of my team were based on three brilliant trainees, who was Julia Finch, Lisa and um, Celia, um, who were trainees. I gave them a chance because I could see that they had initiative and in fact they were, they were a little bit more, I was quite lucky in choosing them in a way because they were a little bit more than trainees but they actually did themselves really proud uh, and did some amazing work. I think for youngsters heading to, on today if you can find a designer that you like and you never know I don't mind being pestered when people ring me up. I say pestered, but you know, you know, I get lots of people writing. But it, you sometimes it, you can have a lucky day. Um, so, and these are the future makeup artists. When you get good trainees, they are actually worth their weight in gold, and they end up working. They do work really, really hard. But you learn so much, and and you've got the youth on your side, the energy on your side. Um, so, and you've just got to take it on board and be brave and, and don't, don't feel scared. We had eight weeks to shoot it, they knocked a week off. That's quite, a, quite tight on an on a, on a eight week, you know, to get three episodes in eight weeks, that's not, not long. Uh, the weather wasn't great, we had lots of mud and, and uh, it, it, sometimes it was hard. Uh, we had lots of effects, lots of blood, quite a bit of crowd. So um, we, were all, we all muscled in, to be honest, so I think yeah, hopefully the, the output spoke for itself. And it was a talked about show for whatever reasons, you know, the gore, the, the, the believability of it, um, it caused a stir. So I feel quite proud of our little, little project and our team.